Hey guys, welcome to another edition of At Ping. Uh, we got a few good questions today. Let's jump into it. Uh, first one comes from Mike K. Ping, a fan of the new videos, and I've got a two-part question for you. One, why not drop a rider's worst round in points to keep a McAdoo scenario from happening? Um, that's part one question. So let me answer that first of all. Uh, I don't like that idea because a big part of winning a title to me is consistency. There are guys who can be blazing fast uh, or really push the limits, but to try to get that done for nine if it's a 250 series or 18 rounds is really hard. Really, really tough. So I like the consistency aspect of it. Um, so I don't like that idea of dropping around. I know, I know they do that in some other sports, but I'm just not super into it. I think it takes out an element of why winning a title is so hard. Question two, would more flat 180 degree turns slow down racing? 45 degree banked berms seem like cheating as an off-road guy. Um, I'm not against more of those. I think that uh, the problem is depending on the way you make the obstacles coming out of a turn, if it's a flat corner, everyone's just going to hug the inside. There really isn't a lot of incentive to go wide, especially on these modern four-stroke bikes, because they can come out of the inside and still jump anything. So I think you just have to be careful of how you're building the track. And I think that uh, really what we need is more variety. We need not just the same berms in every turn, you know, make a flat turn, make it off camber, make it tighter, just change it up. The guys are so used to the same old thing you can watch them go out and practice first lap and jump everything. That, that shouldn't be the case. You know, they sh you got to make these guys think a little bit. Um, that's my opinion. I I'd like to see it a little more technical. Okay, second one. Ping, congrats on all your post-racing successes. Question, did you see Rhino on Gypsy Tales talking smack about Muskin going backwards because of his riding style? How do you think he feels about uh, his comments after Marvin's win? Is Rhino a straight up nut job or what? Thanks, Brian Montgomery. Uh, well, there's, there's a few parts and pieces to that. First of all, um, Rhino can be nuttier than squirrel turds at times, for sure. He he can. But there's also if you if you weed out some of the you know uh, some of the stuff, he's got always these really good nuggets of truth. And um, when it comes to riding technique. He's not wrong. He's not wrong about a lot of this stuff. So I know it's real easy to say, oh, Rhino's a lunatic. You know, he says, don't wear knee braces. Well, maybe open your mind up a little bit and try it. So what he was talking about specifically with Marvin is that he's braced up so much that he can't, he, he can't move the way his body should be able to move. So you can say that maybe that Marvin's win made Rhino look bad. Marvin wasn't wearing a neck brace. I don't know if you caught that or not. So Rhino actually went on and said, see, he takes the neck brace off. He's able to move and his body's able to function the way it's supposed to on the motorcycle and he wins. Um, I think that's what he was getting at. It's not that Marvin has bad form or bad technique. It was that all of these contraptions he had on him were keeping his body from working the way it should. So it can depend on how you look at it. And I didn't listen to that podcast. We had Rhino on our show and it was uh, equal parts fascinating and squirrely too. So um, like I said, you got to take what he says with a grain of salt, but there's nuggets of really good stuff in there. So don't just write him off as crazy. He told me about knee braces on our show and I've tried it. I tried it. I said, I'm going to give it three rides. And if I, you know, I, I'm a guy that's got, I've blown three ACLs out and had them reconstructed. I've got a bunch of my meniscus missing. My knees are terrible, but I said, all right, you know what? I, I'm going to try it. Rhino talked about the functionality and the, the physiology of the way your knees are supposed to be able to move and how braces just lock them into this one plane of motion. And it made sense to me. And what I found was that um, I can squeeze the bike better. I can move laterally with the motorcycle a lot easier. And I found that my feet, because I don't have these, these bulky knee brace insides between my knee and the bike, my feet are tucked in tighter to the, on the pegs. So I'm not getting my feet clipped and grabbed by dirt and ruts and pulled off the pegs anymore. Literally hasn't happened in two years since I stopped wearing knee braces. I wear a compression sleeve. Um, I think the brand is called Ray-Ban. I just bought them off. They're a, a CrossFit product, uh, but I bought the very thick tight ones. And then I just wear a regular knee cup over it. So my knee does have some compression um, just to keep it warm and kind of a, a, a secured feeling. And then 
a knee cup over the top of it. And I have, I'll never go back, bottom line. Uh, and even Dave Castillo, we had him on our show. This is the guy whose father invented CTIs. He owned asterisk knee braces before he sold it. And he straight up said, a knee brace is just a glorified expensive knee cup unless you tether the brace to the boot. Uh, asterisk is the only knee brace that does that and very few people utilize it. But otherwise, there's there's no way that, that a brace will help you from lateral rotation. A little bit of hyperextension protection, a little bit of lateral, uh, this, you know, protection from getting blown to the side, but not much. I mean, a, a brace can't be, because of your muscular tissue and your skin, you can't make it tight enough to hold that joint steady. So if it gets twisted or it gets torqued, it's going to move. You know, the brace isn't going to be able to stop it um, from, from hyperextending or from moving enough laterally to do damage to some of your ligaments. So you know, take it or leave it. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to beat the drum as hard as Rhino does, but I would just say, open your mind up a little bit and try what he says, give it three rides. And if you don't feel a difference, then go back to your braces. You know, last question. That was from, uh, Brian Montgomery. Thanks for the question, Brian. Uh, thank you for your service as a first responder. Fire, Leo and military are always in my prayers. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we've all seen the backlash from stick and ball sports supporting Antifa and BLM. Our teams, riders, felt, et cetera, being careful to avoid politics. If Supercross Motocross goes there, I'm tuning out, even as a lifelong fan. McElrath and RC posted pro-Trump things. Uh, Mookie had a BLM butt patch. I got off social media six months ago, so I don't know what's been posted recently. Just curious what your take is. Thank you. Uh, this is from the Idaho Gun Nut, uh, appropriately. Um, my recommendation to any of these companies is take a take a take a page out of the UFC's book. Okay, I'm I'm not I don't follow UFC or at all, but I've watched what they've done and they've completely ignored politics. People are coming to these events; they're watching dirt bike races because they want to escape that stuff. Um, I don't I don't want to see it or hear it. It's it's twenty four seven on the news cycles. I'm over it. Okay, um, and what no matter what side you're on or where you land on that spectrum, I think we're all kind of just sick of it so i'm so thankful that our sport hasn't you know dove into that mucky pool just stay out of it man like you know no good can come of it you're, you're either way you're going to split your fan base in half um and look I, I i have a i have my issues with it and i've posted probably more than i should on my social media and i tell myself probably a couple times a week all right i'm done no more politics and then i'll see something and i get all fired up and i post it I hope that we'll just stay away from it. Um, it's it's a, as, as divisive as it's ever been right now. And, and I don't think any good can come from taking a side or taking a stand. I don't think I've seen many people posting a lot in our sport. So whether they're doing that intentionally or just not focused on it, we've been pretty free of it, which I, I'm thankful for. So hopefully that keeps up and uh, we don't have to make that choice of whether or not to tune in or not. Um, all right, that's it. I appreciate it, guys. Hey, remember, you can send your videos in. Just take a little video with your phone, and we'll digitally put your question up so your face will be on there, you reading your question. Um, or you can send a voice note as well, and just send those to ping at vitalmx.com, and we'll have you guys on here and answer your questions. Keep them coming. The weirder, the better. I love it. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and see you next week.